It's your boy, Sergeant Hook on Heroes, uh, with another uh, review slash recap, this time for Kamen Rider Geats, episode 22. I had previously recorded this as an on-the-go review on my car, tried to upload it, had some issues there, got deleted, so I had to redo it. Um, but anyway, uh, you also see the uh, Don Brothers 48 review today, and then also um, tonight, as recording this on Friday, at uh, 7.45, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Henshins and Homies will be having the honored guests of uh, Kaiju Carl, the host of Tokudan Podcast, um, and also Britt Grayson, an aspiring Tokutuber, um, on to talk about the Osama Sentai King Oger press conference, and then also what each of our favorite uh, Sentai or Rider or both finale episodes are. So anyway, um, just wanted to kind of give that up, uh, the information up there, but uh, let's, 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 let's just take a little, get a little treat from some geeks. We're getting good. Um <laughs> So, episode 22 was really interesting, really good, pretty much all the way through. I liked most of it. Um, I think overall it was a really decent episode, and I'm excited to see the big change-up for next week, which we'll get there. Um, so, this week is interesting because normally each of the DGP rounds are preceded by um, Jamato attack, and then they set up the game for that, right? Well, on purpose, Team Jamato, which is, of course, Beruba, and also um, Michinaga and now Daichi, or, or um, Madge Sparrow, whatever he's called, uh, along with um, Archimedal, have decided to hold back the Jamato to not go attack, um, thereby doing it so long, forcing uh, Chiram, the current game uh, game master, to bring come out with his his vision driver, uh, becoming Glare Two. It's so it's it's a, it's another little repaint of it besides Gazer and Normal Glare, and it's really interesting. But we'll get there. So essentially, he has to be the uh, the enemy for this round, and so. The whole thing is that it's a hide and seek mission. They gotta find him, basically, and capture him, and then that's how they win. And they have two half hour segments to do it. So the of course the whole team's like, really? Like what the hell? Where are the Jamato at? They don't understand. So they go for it, and uh, we get a lot of uh, really funny sequences where uh, Tycoon keeps like stepping on these little he, uh, Glare Two or Chiram, who gets a really goofy henchin pose sequence that's so stupid, uh, using the vision driver. He uh, sets up little traps and stuff. He doesn't want to fight himself, so he keeps sending out sending out the little glare drones. And then also setting up little traps, like little, like, Looney Tunes-esque fucking Acme traps. And they're little, like, you know, um, like trip mines where if you step on it and then you go off it, boom, it blows up. So it gets Tycoon a couple times. And uh, it's funny because at one point him and uh, uh, Neon are uh, working together, or uh, Nago, whatever. And uh, they end up, like, at one point, like, putting their weapons down on top of it to weigh it down so it won't blow up after he accidentally steps on one. It's pretty smart. Uh... But we also are reeling from the uh, reveal from last week that it was never Lupo who was Disaster, but actually Neon herself, which I had thought from the beginning, honestly. Um, and it made a lot of sense. She just seemed like the most innocent out of anybody that it could be her. Um, and they do a decent job with her. They go a little too hard on her making it really stupid obvious that it's her. Um, a lot of things like going out of her way to make certain things happen, tri happen uh, tripping a lot, getting in the way of gunfire, things like that. Um, there's a sequence in between rounds because the first round they are absolutely unsuccessful in getting uh, Chiram. They're at this restaurant in the normal, like, real world. And it's Kawa and uh, Neon and Ace. And uh, Neon and Kawa are kind of going back and forth bickering a little bit because Kawa doesn't believe that Ace is the Deza Star, but she does. She's trying to paint that picture that he's it because, of course, he would be. Ace is the Sly Fox, manipulator, or whatever. And so Ace eventually interrupts him and is like, wow, you guys having a bit of a lover's quarrel when you're a married couple? And just sits there and kind of waits for them. Like, he, he, you know, just waiting for what their action is. And they both stand up angry, like, no, blah, blah, blah. And they scream or whatever and get really upset. And uh, it's clear that there's, like, a possibility they might go somewhere with that storyline. Because it's it's been little hints here and there that she cares about him and he cares about her. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So, uh, that was one of the first signs to, to, I think, to Ace. And he was like, what's going on here with you, Nago? Um, so, second round starts. And, um... Uh, this time, Michinaga and Daichi are involved in trying to find Chiram as well. With the goal, however, to take the vision driver from Chiram. They are successful in beating his ass, essentially. Um, not before he uh, is running away from like Ace and everyone else. Ace is like shooting at him with the Magnum. Uh, the Magnum 40XX or whatever. And he's like doing the worm on the ground to like dodge all the shots. It's so stupid. He sets up the glare drones to have like tripwire lasers. They keep throwing around Tycoon and basically everybody. And at one point, Nago kind of throws herself in the way of one of the attacks of Aces. And uh, that kind of sends another red flag, like, okay, what's going on here? She has to be the Dizzy Star, right? 
And so she's also told that uh, if she is not successful winning the whole DGP thing, being Deza Star, right, that her wish will never come true. As far as her like wish to like find true love will never come true. I don't know if that's exactly true or if that's just like a scare tactic or if there's some way they'll skirt around that eventually. But regardless, it's interesting that they're putting some stakes on it for her to be the one that wins everything so she can get her wish and not have her wish outlawed, essentially. Um, but uh, after this, we see uh, Betterbuck come into it. She has the same little like gun shooter driver, raise, with the laser raise riser, as, uh, as Jean has as well. And we'll get to that. And she presses the button on it and you hear a sound and then you, it zooms away from her and you see her shadow getting bigger. I think there was some salt, some like grains of salt things confirming that her rider form is going to be mostly CG, like a monster type of form. Um, but she scares the shit out of Chiram and he, he, she gets the vision driver from him and he's like, why do you even want it? Like, what are you, why are you getting it from me? She goes, well, isn't this the way that game masters and producers and whoever access the desire goddess? And he's like, yeah, that's what we want it for. We would like to just access her ourselves to get what we want. And so I like that there's like an, a, like a, a full, like realized goal as to what they're doing and why they want the vision driver. And that we're getting a little bit more lore. Again, every episode lifts up, you know, a bit more lore to us and tells us why certain things are happening the way they are. Um, I also get a shot while she's talking about that of this really creepy looking like angelic statue that I think is trying to hint at the fact that maybe encased inside of it is Mitsume is uh what's his name's mom Ace's mom um, and maybe she's the desire goddess I don't know but it explain a lot of why he's so good at winning maybe there was some wish she put through that he's you know good at everything or really a great contestant I don't know um, but yes yeah, so that's their plan so they're able to take the vision driver and uh, after this we also see a scene between Na- uh Neon, uh, Kewa, and uh, Ace, and they're finally confronting her. And she and he, Ace comes out and just straight says it, like, I think you're the Days of Star. And she's like, what? It's like, I think it makes the most sense. You've been really acting funny the entire round, and you'd be the last one anyone would suspect that would try to sabotage and make things, you know, go cuckoo, if you will, or go haywire. And she kind of denies it, and she even tells Kewa, like, you know, you don't believe that, right? It's got to be Ace, right? And he goes, well, I think it's maybe actually you, Neon. And he talks about different things, basically that she's sloppy, that if it was Ace, we wouldn't have seen any of this coming, that he's a very good liar and manipulator and overall thinker, very smart, so he wouldn't leave a trail or show that, like, outwardly that it was him, right? Or be, like, accusing a bunch of people, like, it just wouldn't be how he does things. So, um, they are pretty sure that it's her, and she does actually, like, fess up to it being her, I think so, pretty much, they figure that out. And uh, she's very upset by this, that they know about it. And it kind of makes sense. And again, I don't think there's much of a like personality shift for her in this episode. I think it's just showing that she's not 100% comfortable being an undercover like agent, you know, double crossing type person. And that, you know, yeah, she wants her wish, but that she's kind of seeing that there's some like pretty big ramifications for that in terms of her like allies and friends and what might happen to them just for her to get what she wants. Um... And so after that, we get uh, Betterbot has the vision driver. They're trying to leave. Here comes Gene. And <clears throat> he has the, uh, raise, the laser raise riser in his hand. And uh, he has a little card thing he attaches to it. And we get him transforming. And he even does a little snap thing because he's the silver fox rider. And we get Kamen Rider Gene. And I, I'm getting a little tired of character names transitioning into the Kamen Rider designation. Like Kamen Rider Jin, Kamen Rider Hirobi, Kamen Rider... Whoever the hell, Kamen Rider Jim Johnson. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, but I really like the suit. It's a very unique suit. It's a very like asymmetrical suit. And you have to kind of look at it at certain angles to see what they're going for, for the Fox motif and stuff like that. But I like it. And I like the juxtaposition of what that suit looks like as opposed to like the rest of the DGP um, contestant suits. There's a very much a, a, a distinction between the two. Um, also, interestingly enough, it's, it's pretty well assumed that the little ID card thing he puts on there, which is interesting because it seems to be similar to the Vision Driver ID card, um, it has like a buckle-ness to it, like a buckle um, quality to it. So it will be assumed it'll be part of whatever upgrade Geats gets eventually. Maybe there'll be some dramatic, you know, uh, sacrifice that Gene does and he gives them that ID, you know, the, the little ID card thing, whatever, and then that unlocks his next form. I don't know. Uh, but it's interesting to note, and I, I would be really, be really funny if it came out soon enough, the uh, the laser raised driver, that people could get it, get their hands on it, and throw it on the desire driver and see what it does. Um, but anyway, so they're doing their thing. He, he transforms, and we don't get to see him fight, but it's a really cool transformation sequence. I like the henchin. I like his pose, having the whole little, you know, fox snap thing that, you know, clearly Ace does. 
And uh, I, I like the suit a lot. I think it's really cool. And I think, it, and it's, it's interesting that it's a, D, it's a DX driver. I thought for sure it'd be a P Bandai thing, but it's not. It's a DX normal retail release driver. Um, so yeah, we're in a really interesting uh, part, part in the plot right here where um, we're not quite sure what's going to happen. Supposedly with the episode preview for next week, the DGP is on an indefinite hold, but we still have everybody that can transform at this point transformed and fighting and stuff. And we're also seeing, uh, I believe we'll probably see better buzz um, fully transformed state. Gene is seen fighting with Geats uh, and a few other things here and there too. So I, I, um, I wonder about what's really going on there. Did forget to mention that there was a small moment in here where she rushes out of the restaurant after being pissed that, you know, Ace tried saying that they were in a relationship and she meets this mysterious like character with this like yellow streak in his hair who talks about the DGP as if he knows it. And it seems to be that he's her true supporter. She thought it was her dad, but he's the true supporter. Um, so if that's the case, then it's this character called Kuan, who apparently also has his own ID card, just like uh, um, the Frogman for Kewa, Beroba, and now Jean, that they're all going to have their own laser raised drivers and use those to uh, transform. Him being a, I think, lion-themed rider of some kind, but I don't know for sure. But yeah, so he kind of reveals himself, talks a little bit. I'm sure he'll feature more in next week's episode. Um, but yeah, so definitely some interesting developments for this episode. I think it was a little quick running into the whole thing with Neon to really, we're pretty easily revealing herself as Deza Star. Um, but I, I, I was okay with the like personality switch with her kind of because it's clear from the start that she's not comfortable and can't work under pressure like that to make someone think that she's innocent and not the Deza Star. Like she doesn't know how to do that. So she's going to be very animated about it very easy to, 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 to call her bluff on it if you will um also interesting that now we know that each of the sponsors so far we know about um uh Kekiro, i think is the name of the frog little frog statue man which what is that statue going to transform i bet it will it's Ryder. uh better but gene and now kuan if uh they can all transform with the, the laser rays risers what's the need for the dgp contestants i don't understand that to like stop the jamato and stuff when they could do it themselves and why they exactly set it up this way it's really interesting and how long they've been around exactly because you think if they've been around longer than the contestants are currently supporting why have they not done something more recently to stop the jamato well not baraba but the others so um yeah it's something interesting to think about for sure but overall really good episode if i scored it probably somewhere around like a probably like an eight and a half out of ten i didn't hate it hate it but I do think they could have spent a little more time on the Neon Disaster thing, which I'm sure we'll get some fallout later with. Um, but I did like the stuff with Beroba, her whole plan to like draw out the Games Master to take the Vision Driver, using that to get to the Desire Goddess. And that Jean swoops in to try and you know stop them transforming for the first time and us seeing what the Laser Race Driver is capable of, at least in transformation-wise. Um, and uh, the suit. I really like the suit, personally. A lot of people have been kind of hating on it and on, on a good old Toku Twitter uh, but I like it. I think it looks cool. But uh, overall, pretty good episode. Um, but what did you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Uh, were you, did you love it? Hate it? Were you in the middle? What do you think about Kamen Rider Jean's henchman sequence, pose, and souped? Where do you think things are going with the sponsor riders coming into it now? Um, and uh, what that might happen with this whole, like, the DGP being put on hold, but they're still fighting and stuff. Uh, shows a lot of fighting in what looks to be the Jamato Forest, in my opinion. Um, but yeah, so uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I um, always like to see your guys back and forth conversations and things like that. Uh, but thank you so much as always for, for, for liking and commenting and subscribing and sharing and watching the videos. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me. Um, but as always, stay hooked on Heroes. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.